So thank you for joining today's session. I'm Camilla Brook, Head of Corporate and Consumer Sales at Simply Health, and I'm joined by Sean Evans, Head of Leadership and Development, to discuss how we have actioned organisational purpose at Simply Health. So at Simply Health, we offer a range of health plans to support our customers make the most of life. We employ 950 colleagues, 90% of which are office-based in Hampshire, with the rest working in the field. Currently, all of our team members are working from home and we've had to adapt our ways of working overnight to support our clients, customers and teams. Today, Sean and I are going to discuss the importance of creating a connected culture, the impact of purpose-led leadership, and leveraging employee feedback. Sean and I will then explore how we have used these three areas to shape our health and wellbeing strategy at Simply Health. So how have we created a connected culture at Simply Health? Our employees are our most valuable commodity and therefore it's essential we provide resources and support to help employees focus on their wellbeing. Wellbeing can typically be broken down into four pillars, emotional, physical, financial and social. Not one pillar is more important than the other and it's important to help employees understand how these pillars interact and encourage them to focus on looking after themselves. In order to do this as a business, we need to provide the resources and support to help employees flourish. The benefits of achieving this for the business are clear. We increase employee engagement, giving us happier and healthier workforce, which in turn delivers reduced absence levels and an enhanced employee brand. So in order to create a connected culture, leadership buy-in is crucial. For change to really take effect, we need senior level buy-in so that well-being can be taken seriously by all employees as it's filtered down within the business. Successful health and wellbeing strategies have included senior leaders openly discussing what they do to look after their own health, encouraging team members to take time to focus on wellbeing, putting health and wellbeing on the agenda for all leadership and team meetings, ensuring that employees know that it's okay not to be okay, and signposting support and resources that are available. It's also important that this doesn't become just a one-off promotion and that we keep the momentum and messaging going throughout the year. So a successful health and wellbeing strategy has to be a two-way conversation. We cannot set a strategy in silo and it's really important to engage with our teams. We have to listen to our employers, whether it's by gathering data from surveys or benefit providers or gaining direct feedback from our teams. At Simply Health, we have a range of methods to gather this feedback. We use a monthly chatterbox survey, a Simply Me app and insights from our EAP and GP services, all of which need to be factored into the decisions we make about the benefits we provide and resources that we offer our employees. I'm now very pleased to speak to Sean about some of the things that her team have been doing to really support our health and wellbeing strategy at Simply Health. So Sean, first of all, what do you think we can be doing to engage colleagues to create a connected, inclusive culture? Yes, thanks. Thanks, Camilla. Um, in order to engage colleagues, we really collect their views and then turn their view that those insights into action so that our colleagues really feel listened to. I mean, you've already spoken about some of the examples, but we regularly survey colleagues so we can continuously improve and learn together. Some examples are the Chatterbox survey, which is our engagement survey that you mentioned, and we've currently got an engagement score of 7.8, which we're really pleased about. Also, we've just recently done a health and wellbeing survey where 770 of our colleagues, that's 79% responded. And so we've got great data from that. Also the Simply Me app you mentioned, and already we've had 400 colleagues that have downloaded that. We've got our EAP data, and we've recently done a ways of working questionnaire, just to really understand how people feel about working from home. And from the social side, we've got a Facebook page, which people openly share, Pet Fest we've got going on this week and things like that, which really does 
help just the social social view. In terms of then the insights into action, we use the analytics to drive all our wellbeing initiatives and those specifically that will make the biggest difference and build a sense of community. So pre-COVID, that looked like things like mini health checks and desk massages, which were extremely popular, um, mindfulness sessions, and also just some subject matter expert speaker sessions. Post COVID, we've really had to think about what we do. And we've introduced a Wellbeing Weekly, which is a weekly magazine where we share articles and stories on health and wellbeing. We purchased some of Liggy Webb's ebooks, which are excellent on health and wellbeing topics. And we have recently launched our Energize You Health and Wellbeing program, uh, where 600 colleagues attended a live event launched by Sally Gunnell this week. Um, and we focus on top five conditions that people have said that they really want us to explore, which is physical fitness, losing weight, to be kinder to myself, to improve my diet and to reduce my feelings of stress. And all of those five top areas came as a result of our wellbeing survey. We also focused on health and wellbeing education, giving colleagues regular access to subject matter experts. We have a weekly program of health and wellbeing webinars, and we've had David Beanie um, talk about his mental health experience and Charlie Unwin on high performing teams in a COVID environment. We've also trained over 60 mental health first aiders, which is just invaluable during this period of time. And we have a dedicated internet site for wellbeing that colleagues can go and access all previous webinars. And I've seen a lot of the tools that you've offered, Sean, to us as a business, which is fantastic. But how do you measure the success of all those great things that you've implemented to ensure colleagues have time, you know, to really dedicate to this? Yes, that's a great question. Um, we measure success by constantly asking for feedback after any webinar we run. We also run polls to see what people want next. For example, we ran a poll to see which dish people wanted at a, a recent cook along and we monitor our engagement score so we can see progress both in the verbatim and also the score. At the moment, we've got 85% agreeing that their manager cares about their mental health, which is great. How do we give time to this? We engage with managers so that they support all the health and wellbeing initiatives. And we, and we work with the resourcing team to make sure that we can build time in to the working day for colleagues to attend. We know people are stretched for time, but we find that if we get the comms right, people know about what's coming up. And if it's relevant to them, they'll always find the time to attend. And those that really need it, really search it out. And that way we're guaranteed to reach everyone. That's brilliant. Thank you. And of course, in order to enable us to do all of this, we need the support from our leadership team and purpose led leadership is a really hot topic at the moment. And I know it's something you're really passionate about. But how do you think we can support purpose led leadership to pioneer our well-being approach? Yes, again, a really good question. We help our leaders identify their true purpose so that they can make the link to our organisational purpose, so that they're passionate about the work they do. For example, my purpose is to unlock the potential of others, and that drives my everyday behaviour in the work that I do. We also over communicate with leaders so they know what's coming up and can really act as sponsors. We put a real focus on leadership storytelling. We encourage leaders to step forward and tell their story. So others have more confidence to step up and share how they're feeling. We recently had someone share his story about depression, his struggle with depression. And in the past, I've shared my story of burnout. So we regularly feature leaders in our Wellbeing Weekly as well, which drives higher engagements. Um, one of our senior leaders shared his experience recently of contracting COVID and someone shared their experience of struggling with loss. And all of that just really helps. 
And that's quite a big thing to ask of anyone. Um, and in terms of leaders, when they're having to demonstrate vulnerability, how do you gain their buy-in to do that? Yes, and, it, and it's back to that purpose session. It's such an important and critical session. And we use a technique that is used in a lot of therapy, which is the lifeline exercise, which is where you draw the peaks and troughs of your life and then look back and reflect on how has that made you the person that you are? And we get leaders to share the three events in their life that have really helped shape them. That is such a powerful exercise and they do it with their colleagues and then we ask them to share it with their teams and the more you do it the more you really find out about yourself but then the easier it also becomes to share your story with others so we really encourage that exercise as part of our leadership development yeah absolutely and of course a big part of all of this is um, understanding what our teams think and really getting feedback from from them. So undertaking regular surveys is key within our business, but can you share how we've used that data to drive actions? Absolutely. Um, we give colleagues a, vo a voice through our engagement survey, which runs monthly. We get about 3000 verbatim comments every month. We we've chosen to do it monthly deliberately because we really want to keep on the pulse of how people are feeling at the moment. And it means we can also raise any issues or address any issues in a really timely way. On the system that we've got, the Chatterbox system, we can acknowledge feedback in the moment. I mean, it, it's anonymous, so we don't know who's raised the verbatim comments, but it gives us an opportunity to start a real time conversation with them. And then we can ultimately share our progress. So if we know we're working on something that is really going to address the issue that they've raised, we can, we can tell them then. As an example, the verbatim told us that colleagues were struggling working from home due to the environment and also the equipment that they had. So we gave them a £200 contribution towards their kits. We acted immediately on that one. We also heard that not every colleague has a Fitbit. So as we start to really launch health and wellbeing initiatives, we are looking at ways to ensure that every colleague can have a Fitbit. We also share best practice. Um, so we have a Chatterbox working group, which meets monthly. And this means we don't reinvent the wheel. We take the best suggestions and we can replicate them quite quickly. And we really promote a learning culture. We encourage all colleagues to not only have a voice, but to learn together. We can only act if they tell us what is wrong and then we can learn how to fix it together. We really encourage colleagues to bring in, bring in external best practice too, so that we can create the working environment where our colleagues can flourish. And Sean, do you think there's such thing as too much data and how can you really make sure employees do feel listened to when they're giving their feedback? We, we have a lot of data sources, as you can, you can see from what I described um, at the beginning of this conversation. Um, and what we try and do is use technology to combine all of those data sources and to come up with some themes. And then we just focus on three key themes and those themes will drive our actions corporately. But of course, at an individual level, a manager is able to identify his three key themes and then any anything that they do from that locally is based on those themes. It, it's best not to try and do too much. So really focusing on just what are the three things that are going to make the biggest difference is what we found really works. No, that's brilliant. And Sean, thank you so much for sharing all the great things that you've done within Simply Health. It's been absolutely brilliant. And we've now got the opportunity for any questions that people would like to ask.
Thanks, Sean and Camilla, for sharing with us how Simply Health is working hard to inspire and engage your colleagues to get behind organisational purpose. Um, lots of great practical insights there. Um, just want to come to the poll. So are your leaders more bought into wellbeing as a result of COVID-19? We can see that 43% of people said that they, yes, they are more bought in. 28% said no, they were already bought in. And 29% um, said no, they're focusing on other priorities. So is that, I wondered, um, Sean, whether that was what you would expect, uh, thinking about how the reactions you've had within your own organisation? I think I might have expected more to be brought in, um, especially with the news yesterday. Um, definitely for us, we've, we've learned such a lot over the last six months and wellbeing is, is definitely high on our agenda now. Brilliant. So um, how do you keep that health and well-being high on your agenda at Simply Health? I mean, what are the things that you're doing and how are you keeping that momentum going? I guess there may be, um, as you say, it's been highlighted by the focus now on the next six months of working from home, but I'm sure that's kind of had an impact on individuals' kind of stress and, and concern levels. So how will you keep that going moving forward from today? Currently, we uh, have weekly calls with all our people managers. So we're constantly getting feedback in terms of how people are feeling. And we just make sure that everything that we do is, is addressing how people are feeling in the moment. Um, we've also got our, our Chatterbox survey, which is our engagement survey. And we have health and wellbeing questions in that every month. So again, we're getting more data that really helps inform what we do and how we support our colleagues. And I think that's really important to keep current, keep in the moment and keep you know, on the pulse of how people are feeling. And Brilliant. It, it, and I can see... Sorry, sorry, Sean. I was just going to say, it really does come from the leadership structure as well, which Sean articulated mm. um, in the session, that it comes very much from the top and those weekly management sessions are so important for managers then to trickle down into their teams and update them on all the great things that we are doing um, in the weeks and coming months. Brilliant. I can see here in the chat, um, someone's mentioned how they really like the idea of your senior manager sharing three events that have shaped them. I just wondered what initiative do you think has driven the best results for Simply Health sort of as a business and, and for your employees? I definitely think doing the health and wellbeing survey uh, has really helped us. It's, it's helped us identify what are some of the things that colleagues really want us to pay attention to and to give them more information on, like mental health as an example. But it's also helped us start to shape our strategy for the next 12 months. So I think for us, that's been invaluable. Great. And Sean, was there anything you wanted to add? I think, you know, the Energised survey and the Chatterbox survey are really crucial for us as a business. It's that constant communication, constant reaching out to our employees and understanding the daily challenges they're going through. And with the announcements yesterday, we're set up for, you know, working from home for the next few months as it gets into the winter, as the nights draw in. And that's going to bring a really different change for us because we've been quite lucky with the good weather um, and been able to do some really great things with um, energising our teams, encouraging them to get out and do exercise. So the next phase for us is really looking at what we can do in the winter months to continue to motivate them and support them through through the next set of challenges. And that's why this communication tool is so important to understand what they're, they're going through. And I think that's really key, isn't it? Because I think we've, we've learned a lot over the last six months, but there are some additional challenges as we move into the winter months. But I guess in the, in the final minute, I just wondered what you would say has been the key positive learning at Simply Health and one that you'll take forward you know, potentially for the next six months and, and long term? I think for me, it was when we started out, I think we, we, we tried to probably do too much. And I think keep focused on doing a few things really well, I think mm -hmm. makes the biggest difference. So for us, we just focused on four areas of health and wellbeing relentlessly. And I think that's meant through a test and learn approach that we've really got some traction. We now know what works, what doesn't work, 
and, and what to really focus on over the next six months. Brilliant. Well, thank you both. I mean, lots of really practical insights and ideas of what you're doing at Simply Health um, to inspire and engage people in that organisational purpose. So thank you very much for your time this morning.